Information packs of the players, and they all said, you know, Canister is the guy to look out for. Yes. He is absolutely wrecking it. So uh, it's going to be awesome to see what his deck can achieve this weekend. A lot of players hailing it as probably the best deck in the tournament. So I would like to see if that remains true. Take a look at this opening hand. It's a bit of a yikes. Only the one land, but we do have the Edge Wing Keeper and a couple of Lovestruck Beasts. So we could just gum up the board while we wait for land. But nope, that is not the case. Mulliganing, Finding the Felmar Knight, Order of Midnight, and Rankle, Master of Pranks. This looks a lot better, yeah? Yeah, I think a smart mulligan. Easy to put a card back here. Temple of Malady is going to be able to kind of bridge the gap a little bit as well as far as finding lands or action, whatever he really needs. So Fabled Passage is a pretty easy card to put to the bottom, and away we go with our first emote. He says, hello. Hello. It's me. I was wondering if after all this time you'd like to fight. No, <laughs> anyway, carrying on. <laughs> So, firing off the couple of lands to get things underway, we've got the Farm Iron Knight that we can just play as an adventure spell. Otherwise, we can cycle, draw a card, and uh, ping ourselves in the face if we are a canister at a later stage. But let's see what he decides to do here. I'm gonna run out the second Temple of Melody. Or if he wants to get the Order of Midnight rocking in the air. Now, this is a little bit interesting here, taking a look at both players' hands and the texture of this game. I expect these games to be somewhat lengthy because they are both mid-range decks that interact a lot. Um, Deputy attention there on Marcio's side. Of course, we're not seeing, we're not seeing at this moment Murderous Rider here from Canister's side, but we will, I, I assume, over time. Uh, Legion Zen is an interesting draw step for for Peter, and the reason for that is because he's not particularly good in the matchup. No. Um, it, is there it's, anything it hits? Uh, not really. I mean, there might be a, a, a couple of mana accelerants, but really past that, not very much. So you're not very excited about drawing that card in this matchup. It's one of the dead draws that you see Murderous Rider slash Swift End. Uh, we'll see where he wants to put that with the scry. But these games should be somewhat long. There should be a lot of interaction here. And it looks like Marshall is going to be the first to the battlefield with the turn three Oko. Scrying the murderous rider to the bottom of the library. Not going to be useful at the moment, but Nissa who shakes the world is the draw for Marcio. That is pretty much the dream hand you want there. Oko, if you find a land, we're into our wicked wolf. We're into Nissa the turn after. That's pretty good so far. Let's see what Canister wants to do. We're we keeping up the Falmar Knight's profane insight, or are we getting a birdie going? Nope, we're going to hold on to that. See what Marcio Cavallio has in response. It's a very slow build, this game, oh, yeah. for sure. Now, we're going to make a food into an elk, give some beatdowns. So, Golski is going to fall down to 17. But I expect Order of Midnight to, in most instances, not going to say all, but in most instances, just be played as Alter Fate, get back a little stuff, because the, the texture of these games, they should, again, go fairly long. Exactly right. So, Falmar Knight firing off, drawing another Falmar Knight, or the Temple of Melody, and drawing the Falmar, should I say. So we do have a Paradise Druid as a target for Legion's End, but I think we're just going after that food token. Sorry, that's an elk. I'm bad at identifying <laughs> creatures. He's considering it. I mean, it's not a bad target. Saves him from getting smacked in the face for three. So that is off the battlefield, no longer an issue. But we do know Oko likes to cook, so he's going to cook up some more food for himself and his friends. Temple of Malady going to scry. Finding the Lovestruck Beast goes to the, where does it go, Canister? Yeah, where does it go? That's interesting. Looks like he's opting towards putting that towards the bottom, and now it's just going to hard cast the Falmar Knight that has already gone in an adventure. Paradise Druid was actually a pretty good draw last turn, because even though it wasn't a land, and certainly not a green source to be able to cast Wicked Wolf or anything else, it was still a mana source, which yeah. is exactly what uh, Marcio needed. Now he can deploy Nyssa, now he can get ahead on the battlefield, and Canister is behind two Planeswalkers to zero. Yeah, that's a little bit of a not so nice to see if you are Canister in the bottom of your screen. But Nissa is now on the battlefield, gonna animate some lands and go a swinging, or do we? There's the Falmire Knight there, but you know, losing a land's not that big a deal, is it? No, nah, you don't really mind that all that much at all. So we're gonna start to activate a little bit here and uh, we'll see if we do wanna get busy. Looks like gonna hold back right now, but yep. Nissa's already gonna start to lead to a bit of an advantage in this game. As again, we're gonna work ourselves into the mid game. Wouldn't be surprised to see us work ourselves pretty deep into the late games in these green mid-range mirrors since they are very interactive. Fable Passage, the draw there for Canister. He's just deciding what he wants to do. He does have the Rankle Master of Pranks that can swing in for some damage, but it's not going to do that much because, of course, Dear Oko can just make it into an elk. I'm pretty sure that's not what he wants. So we're looking for a Murderous Rider here now. Would that be the uh, 
the ideal draw for Piotr? I think that would be a good start. Now, of course, he did scry one to the bottom there from a Temple of Malady, so I think that's part of the reason that we might be seeing Fable Passage here. Uh, another reason is, of course, because of a forest and the combination with Nyssa. So Nyssa's going to join the battlefield here, mm -hmm. and now we've got our Nyssa War that's beginning to take place. <laughs> and as we saw in one of our earlier matches, where it is so important in these green mid-range mirrors, be it Simic, Bant, or Golgari, you have to check these Planeswalkers. Yeah. You have to get them off the battlefield as fast as you can. They both have so much darn loyalty, but you have to mm -hmm. kill them and then worry about taking care of the rest of the game from there. Yeah, because they just run away with the game. I mean, yep. if Nissa's left unchecked, her ultimate is pretty insane. Yeah. You just get a whole bunch of indestructible forests that, yeah, they, they hurt. Legion's End can deal with them, but we'll have to wait to see if the game gets to that. So the Swamp just threatening to ping three points of damage, or do three points of damage to Nissa who shakes the world, and we're going to see a trade here with the island. Now, I'm glad you pointed out that Legion's End because it was played a little bit earlier in the game, as we know, and you can see that because we can see Marcio's hand. Of course, you can at home, but those red little eyeballs means that Pitor knows as well what's going on, and that's two deputy detentions and a Wicked Wolf. Mystery card there is Hydroid Crisis. Certainly not a bad draw. We'll get to that in just a moment. But the fact that Canister knows exactly what Marcio was working with, ignoring that Hydroid Crisis, means that it's going to shape the way he's going to play the game. He knows that, okay, there's not one, but there's two Deputy Detentions, and there's a Wicked Wolf, so my opponent has plenty of removal. I have to kind of weirdly coordinate a game a certain way now around those cards. <laughs> it's always nice seeing what your opponent's uh, dealing with. Well, the game would be much easier if we always knew. Oh, yeah, for sure. So Marcio is just deciding, does he want to fire off that Wicked Wolf and get rid of the Falmar Knight? He can make it indestructible with a food token that is on the battlefield. This Wicked Wolf has put on a pretty good showing so far this tournament. We saw it in the first few rounds, just absolutely dominating the battlefield. A really, really tricky threat to get rid of. And here it comes, taking a munch out of that Falmar Knight, going to activate its ability and make itself indestructible, giving itself a counter and tapping it in the process. But no more Farmer Knight to deal with. We do have Order of Midnight in Kanish's hand, so he can go and fetch that back if he wants, but he's got a spare in hand too, so not a big deal that that is no longer a factor. And again, what's happening here is just a clearing of the way yeah. to be able to take care of Nyssa. So now you see Paradise Druids are going to come at 3 3. Hollow Fountains going to come at 3 3. Conveniently, that Nyssa has six loyalties. So now Marcio again takes that Planeswalker advantage. Oh, yeah. Even further, it was 2-0, then it was 2-1, to one, now it's 2-0 again. Marcio, it's all about in these green mid-range mirrors, who has more Planeswalkers, who's getting more out of what they're able to do. You just saw that turn where Oko and Nissa looked fantastic. Oh, yes. Very much looking like Marcio Carvalho's game to win. But what does Canister have up his sleeve? He still has Rankle. He can call shenanigans with that. We've seen in previous events like the MPL Weekly where Rankle just absolutely wrecks the battlefield. But what factor will it play well i'm going to point out two numbers here seven and ten that's the loyalty that's, yeah. that those planeswalkers have so as much as i like rankle and that card yeah, is a much. really good card <laughs> it's it's got some work to do oh yes on these planeswalkers and that means that Goglowski is really far behind right now and he's got some serious work to do gonna draw a little card there with the front half of Falmire Knight and maybe play it again, but this is this is getting really, really tough. His deck just really didn't get off the ground very well this game. No, oh, it didn't. Maybe keeping that um, Murder's Rider in the beginning may have helped him a little bit, but still, it just it's all coming up Marsha at the moment. So the Falmire Knight back on the battlefield after drawing a card and pinging him for one. Fabled Passage. Oko now creating another food token, so this Wicked Wolf can just go absolutely ham as much as he wants. <laughs> It's I mean, a little crazy to think of, you know, with this with the goose, with Oko, all of them, they just, oh, you know, just keep feeding this wolf. Wicked Wolf is great. Yeah, he's That card is card. really, really strong. Talking to a lot of players leading up to this tournament, especially William Huey Jensen, former world champion and Magic Hall of Famer, he was saying, I mean, this card's outrageous. It is. He, he just felt like this, <laughs> you know, you get to play this, get to eat something, you know, eat, eat some food, kill your creature, and then, oh, your other creatures, they probably can't attack through a 4-4, and if I'm generating food, then my creature's indestructible. Best of luck to you. So yeah. seeing players playing Simic food, or in this instance, Bant food from Arsene, Mm -hmm. No real surprise to see four copies of uh, the Wolf in the deck. <laughs> he is a good wolf, and Canister is hovering over that concession yep. button, and he knows the writing's on the wall. The dog is coming in hot, as well as a massive Hydroid Crisis. So he's scooping it up, saying, all right, let's go to match number two, game number two, I should say, 
What do we do sideboard wise? Well, it's time to get to work here for Canister. So obviously things did not work out well in that particular game. Now Noxious Grasp is certainly an addition I think we're going to see here in just a moment. I love the top end of going towards Liliana, Dread Horde General as well. So some good cards to be bringing in here to be sure. Not in love with Legion's end of the matchup, but I of course do default towards our member of the MPL here who is playing this very innovative deck in Golgari Adventures. <laughs> a deck that he did very well in MPL Weekly with as well. So we can't forget about that. He's looking to go a little bit bigger. When you are in these range mirrors it's generally who's able to go to the top rope for a wrestling reference uh, <laughs> the best now Liliana does that better than most you can say the same thing about the Great Henge but the problem with the Great Henge Elias is that darn Oko? It becomes an elk? Yes, it does. it does. More often than not, it will become an elk. So I like the idea of sideboarding that out because you know the chances of that actually getting in to do its thing are quite low. Liliana can replace that. We can work towards Massacre Girl. We can work towards the finality, half of fine finality. There's a lot to be done here. I generally don't expect those games to go that quickly. And I don't think that Golgowski does either. And I don't think he wants him to go that way because more often than not, he's probably losing them. I think he just got off to a bad start there. Didn't yeah. find his gas as... Magic players like to say. Yes. So let's see if we can find some gas for Canister. And if, see if he can choo-choo his way to victory. That's a pretty good hand there. It's not too so, shabby. So you're going to keep this. Oh, yeah. For sure. Now, the, the interesting thing here is does he want to lead out with Fable Passage or Forest? You know, you can play Forest, Edgewell, Innkeeper, but then the Fable Passage will search up a land and might be able to play Paradise Druid on turn two. So we're going to start with the Fable Passage, which yeah. means that Innkeeper is going to come a little bit later down the road. It'll That's still be fine. good. Yeah. Still be totally fine. I mean, you want to find, you want to get cards off of your edge wing keeper. You just don't want to send it out into the battlefield, into the, you know, the depths of whatever Marshal Cavalio is cooking <laughs> up there without any backup. So here we go, Fabled Passage getting cracked. We're going to go and find a swamp just to fix the man a little bit. And then we got swamp, forest, and another forest off the top right. for canister. Easy peasy. Problems are mostly solved now. Yeah, Mana doesn't appear good. to be an issue. You've got a little bit of acceleration with Paradise Druid. You know your Paradise Druid isn't going to die for pretty obvious reasons of Hexproof, and you're playing a deck that doesn't have a ton of removal anyway. So now Edgewall Innkeeper can start to work itself into the equation, and we can really have maybe a little bit more of a back-and-forth game here, something that Kogowski was not able to have in the first contest. Do you think we'll see the Order of Midnight just being able to fly over the top? I, I find it, again, I find that to be rare. If the game's going the way uh, that Kogowski wants things to go, it's going to be returning something, replaying a, a very valuable and powerful threat, doing all that stuff. I don't foresee Order of Midnight being hardcast, but, you know, now it's obviously going to be. So what do I know? <laughs> well, creatures on the battlefield, never a bad thing, especially if you want to try and kill your opponent quick, because, uh, yeah, this uh, lovely Bant food deck, which is, you know, it's kind of like a Bant food ramp deck. It just goes crazy so quickly. So I kind of like this from Canister, just getting as many creatures down as he can. But this Voracious Hydra is going to deal with the Edgewall Innkeeper. Yeah. Of those, that threat. Of those, the easiest one to kill. Now, that's a heck of a draw step there Ooh, for Canister, hello. picking up a copy of Nissa. The rest of his hand, again, was totally fine. Two copies of Murderous Rider you're not unhappy with, certainly, in this matchup, if you were paying attention to that first game and those Planeswalkers that dominated. <laughs> but Nissa's going to start to dominate. And now, if you're Marcio, he's got to ask himself the oh, question, yeah. how do I deal with this thing? Because it's going to take over. Piazza is swinging in with the team. Voracious Hydra can block the Falmire Knight. It will die, which is pretty good if you are Piotr Glogowski. Now, Marcio on the back foot a little bit. He does have Nyssa of his own as well as a Deputy of Detention. He's just yoinked off at the top of the library. So interestingly, if our viewers are with us earlier when Maria, excuse me, and Paul were actually over the news desk previewing this matchup, one thing that Paul said was Deputy of Detention. I understand why Marcio was playing and splashing for it, yeah. but in this matchup, he didn't feel it was very good. Um, he felt that Murderous Rider and, more importantly, the Swift End yeah. side of Murderous Rider was going to be a problem. Finality, Vivian, many different ways to take care of this, and we're seeing this actually unfold right in front of us. Two copies of Murderous Rider. That Deputy of Detention would love to have that Nissa underneath it forever. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be there it's long. It's not going to happen, no. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. We have two swift ends in the hand of Piotr Glogowski. He's going to fire one off now. No questions asked. To get back his Nissa, no doubt. So let's see how he wants to sequence this. Could go in for the attack first, perhaps, or he could just smack it, get the Nissa back, and then animate the land, swing in. Merry Christmas for him. Yeah, a little to think about here, just on how you want to go about doing this. Again, it's an option. 
Yeah. It's not 100% to take place. And I think what I like about this turn here for Glogowski is just first and foremost, just taking a moment and thinking things through. Yeah. Let's not rush through anything. You know, is there something you could have that would cause a problem and not make this actually work out? Is this a play that I actually have to make? Clearly, he feels as though he can just do some attacking first. We might not even see him play the swift end half of Murderous Rider on this particular turn. So he's just going to start here, get the easy part out of the way, which is the attacking. And now we're going to see the swift in half a murderous rider. There goes that deputy of detention, like you mentioned, and Paul mentioned. It's not going to be staying on the battlefield for very long. Mm -mm. Running out the land for turn and just getting that murderous rider back on the battlefield, perhaps. Yeah, this is a great turn yeah, because now Nissa is going to plus untap. Now you get to deploy murderous rider. You still have another murderous rider slash swift, swift and pardon me in hand. And that's something I love to do say, uh, your turn. <laughs> Best of luck to you. Your go. Gil the Goose is the draw for Marcio Carvalho. He's got some catching up to do. Does have his own Nissa, he does have a Hydroid Crisis, but it's currently looking very much in Piotr Glogowski's favor. Are you sure that Marcio, that's not the look of confidence? The, uh, right now for him, I think he's in a rock and a hard that place. That looks like the not like this. Yes, I mean. You're familiar with Twitch. Uh, and I, I very stuff. much am. Yes, um, not like this. Right now he is in a difficult situation. Again, Planeswalker advantage, let's count it, one to zero. Now we're all tied up and Marcio is trying to play catch up. And if we just count the Planeswalkers, okay, sure, it's all tied up, but uh, obviously uh, Mr. Glogowski has a lot of other things on the <laughs> battlefield. So Marcio is very far behind right Indeed. now. Indeed, Murderous Rider has this is name written all over it too. So that's not going to be a factor for very long for Piotr Glogowski. He is slowly taking over this game. Marcio is at 10 currently. He's got a team of trees that want to go smacking. So let's see what he plays here. If he gets rid of Nissa first, if he removes an island. Could he get? Could he have lethal here? He's counting. Yeah, he's doing the math. He wants to see exactly what he can do. Can I get this game over with right now? Is there anything I need to play around right now? Again, I have another removal spell. I've got plenty of life to work with, so I'll pay two. He's I, got lethal. Yeah, I, I, he's certainly very close to it. Kills that island, and then swing a ding ding. Yep, I think that's it. Might have to work on this uh, activation into the equation. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Get the other, get the other land rocking, and that should be all she wrote for this game number two. Yeah, again, one of the one of the things that the very best players do, and both these players, of course, are in the MPL, so they are two of the very best. Is even when the game looks like it's <laughs> just about done, let me just think it through. Yeah. Let me think about: is there something weird that you can have? Is there any reason for me to yeah. rush? There's not. No. So he took his time, thought it through, made sure he didn't make a mistake, make the right play. Getting ready for G3. Yeah, no hasty attack all from Piotr Glogowski, just making sure he had the math right. And he sure did. So we are tied up one apiece between Marcio Cavallo and Piotr Glogowski. Game number three. What do we change? So I'm looking at what we're changing right now. Find finality he doesn't want access to anymore. Order of Midnight, even though it was good enough that game. Drawing a card and being a 2-2 flyer and pressuring the opponent on the draw, obviously, does not do a good job of blocking. Um, don't really Doesn't really uh, apparently care about the ability to rebuy something. So he's doing a little bit of ins and outs. And this is also one of the things that I love, too, when we're, when we're playing a high-level tournament like this, where a lot of the time players would just go, OK, so you know, minus this, plus this, maybe accessing a cyborg guide. but. In this instance, we're seeing him going, you know what, uh, maybe fine finale, maybe not. Let me think this through a little bit. Initially, he took it out. Then he brought it back in. Maybe he thought about something that Marcio could have. So he wants access to at least one of those here for this third game. Let's get this underway. The final game between Marcio Cavallo and Piotr Glogowski. Funny thing is, these two are uh, just behind each other in the uh, point standings at the moment. Yeah. So I bet they would love to get the one up of each other. Ooh, Vivian, yes. Now this is the card I wanted <laughs> to see. I was going to say, hey, could I please have this, Cedric? But I didn't need to because it was there. So I used my one time. Good. Gilded Goose to start. Well, while, while, while you're enjoying Vivian, which yes. is one of my favorite cards, don't yes. get me wrong, what I'm taking a look at here is a really strong hand Ooh. here for Marcio. We're talking turn three Nissa strong. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's that's pretty good. I, I'm not going to lie. That's that's kind of bonkers. And but I, I don't know if you've noticed, Nissa's been pretty good in the games we've watched here. Uh, yeah, you know, she's been pulling her weight and stuff, so sure. <laughs> Legion's End is going to get rid of this Gilded Goose. So we don't have to worry about a turn three Nissa just yet. But, uh, Deputy Detention is the draw there for Marcia Cavallo. Gonna run out the itty bittiest little Hydroid Crisis. Again, not the most exciting of turns to the Hydroid Crisis, but the goal here is I just need to draw my fifth land, yes. or my fifth mana source. He has three lands and a Paradise Druid, so ideally the fourth land, that would be the fifth mana to play Nyssa and start to run away with this thing. 
We almost saw an emote there. He held <laughs> off a little bit, so we might see oh, no. Falmar and I join the fray. He's reserving it. It's okay. Yeah. It's, it's the source of his power. He needs to keep it. Just running out of Falmar Knight, Paradise Druid. Let's get some ramp going. Yeah, hope we to fade. See, mm. We want to see some uh, Vivian or Nyssa or Liliana. Look at these Planeswalker ladies. They are ready to rock and roll. Speaking of which, here comes Nyssa who shakes the world for Marcio Carvalho. Going to get rocking with these lands. The island comes to life. And uh, just the Hydroid Grace is swinging in, pecking away for two in the air. That's still pretty annoying, I'm not going to lie. Now, we are going to work ourselves into a Planeswalker contest here in just a moment because you already see the Vivian. Now you're going to see Nyssa. So Vivian Arcbow Ranger, it, it will ideally show up at some point this game. Not entirely sure yeah. when. But of all I of these cards, Liliana, best of the bunch. Oh, yeah. Just have to get to it. I have a prediction. I so like predictions. The Deputy of Detention is going to steal the Nyssa, but then Vivian Arcbow Ranger is going to make the Falmire and I bite it and get it back. Okay. That's my prediction. Okay. I want to see it happen. We'll unless unless the Falmire Knight kills an island, which would be sad for me. <laughs> we'll see if you're from the future or not. <laughs> That's what I'd like to see happen here. So Canister just taking his time deciding what he wants to do. I mean, all he can do here is run out the Heart's Desire little 1-1, one, one, but that uses up both mana off the forest because Nyssa obviously allows for every instance of a tapped forest to create more green. So Well, there's an interesting play here, too, which yeah. I think he might be considering attacking the Nyssa because he knows his opponent's hand. Yeah. It has a very good sense of it from the Legion's end early. And so he knows that Marcio peeled that land. Mm -hmm. So he might be thinking, well, if I attack your Nyssa, can you afford to, can you afford to trade with my island? Yeah. Now the answer, maybe yes, maybe no. It depends on how Marcio feels about his hand. But for now, it looks like he's just going to pass the turn back. But that's what I believe oh. he was thinking about. Now, multiple copies of Nissa in a lot of games is pretty good. This one, uh, yeah, this one is it, a little bit of great. a yikes. Yeah. It's not what you want to draw. You want to draw something else that helps you get around this uh, army of forests that's slowly amassing on Canister's side of the battlefield. The Hydroid Crisis can get in there for two points of damage if he wants to ping down Nissa, who shakes the world on Canister's side. But we'll just have to see what happens here. I think we might see a Deputy of Detention. What does he take? And this is the obvious option, right? This is the obvious option, not sold that it's the correct option. Down he comes. What does the Deputy of Detention yoink? Oh, yeah. Falmire Knight. Now you ruined my prediction, but it's okay. I'll forgive you. So now that clears the way for some attackers here, if he wants to get in for a few extra points of damage, if that is his desire. Yeah, so what's interesting about taking the Falmar Knight there is, you know, it's just a little 1-1 one -one Death Toucher mm -hmm. and leaving this on the battlefield. But by taking care of that, you open the gates Ooh, for you cool. for being able to do this and not have to worry about really losing much of anything. And if there's a trade that potentially takes place, if you want to trade with the 3-3 land, that means that Golowski actually would lose his land. So Pitor is going to block the Paradise Druid, going to yeah. lose his Nyssa, and then keep moseying along. That's not bad. Oh, very good draw there off the top. Murderous Rider Swift End can deal with Nyssa or the uh, Deputy of Detention. If he wants to get the Farm Knight back, but I think the Nyssa is a little bit more threatening at this point. Well, interesting here. Or Vivian. Interesting because the ability to go to Vivian might be of interest. Um, Lovestruck Beast might work itself into the equation. Murderous Rider is, it's fine. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is because, one, in order to play Swift End or Murderous Rider, you're going to have to tap that Paradise Druid. Yeah. So that was something that maybe would have some interesting interest in blocking in some situations, that would probably be off the table here. Um, he's a little bit constricted in that he would have really loved to just draw on a land. Yeah. Or a mana source that enters the battlefield untapped to be able to play Liliana and let that thing start to try to take over the game or at least catch back up in this game. Yeah, so in a bit of a, a bit of a tricky position here for Glagowski. He does have those three things he can do in hand, but it looks like it's going to be the Lovestruck Beast with its 1-1. One, one. And I like that. It's a good blocker. Not firing off the, the Lovestruck Beast for now. Okay. Attacks first? No? Huh. No, this, is, right. just, this okay. is just leaving up Swift End. Yeah. Now, I will oh, say... There you go, straight away. Yep, and this mm -hmm. is going to happen... Yeah, and, and I like this. This is going to happen, actually, on um, on Marcio's upkeep, so that if he has some sort of counterspell-esque effect, yeah. he has to do it on his own turn with his own mana. So uh, uh, the timing there is correct. If that's when, if that's your plan, that's when you actually want to play because Swift yeah. End, of course, is an instant. Um, I, I like that of just let's get this off the battlefield. Now, of course, we have the pleasure mm -hmm. of knowing that there are multiple that's copies too. of Nissa in hand. So, you know, one of the things about Planeswalkers is sometimes they're horrible multiples. In this instance, drawing another copy, not so bad. Oh, yeah. Nissa is pretty darn good. But does he have the other green source to play? And that's her. the problem right now is that there's a lack of mana. 
here on Marcio's side. So not only is he missing another green source, but he's missing mana source number five. So as we take a look at Marcio's hand, what can he actually do this turn? He can deploy a Paradise Druid. Yeah. And that's really about it. Maybe crack his food token and gain a little bit of life. So if you were if you were canister, your hope was, well, maybe my opponent just doesn't have the land. I knew when he drew the fourth land. Yeah. Didn't play one last turn, so he would need to draw one this turn. Yeah, I mean, Marshall had to attack there with everything to be able to kill um, Ooh, Nissa. Baby, here we Ooh, go. Okay. This is nice. This is very, very nice indeed for Glagowski. So mana source number six. Ooh. Five lands in combination with the Paradise Druid. Double black because of Paradise Druid and Swamp. Uh -huh. Has the ability to deploy Vivian as his only spell for the turn if he'd like to and still leave up Paradise Druid 3-3 land in the 1-1. One, one. Could also go towards Lovestruck Beast and Murderous Rider because it has the necessary mana to do that. Mm -hmm. This turn's going to be a little bit of a lengthy one. How are you supposed to navigate this one is very difficult. You just see Glagowski deciding what he wants to do here. As you said, land first. So we got that out the Get way. The, I'm, a, I'm always Get a big the Get the easy the stuff yeah. out of the way. All right, now what do I want to do? I have many options. Options are always a good thing to have in Magic. Now, it is so hard to pass up on, on deploying Liliana this yeah, turn. You just really want Because to. Liliana is so powerful, and it completely contorts the way yeah. that Marcio has to play the game. Marceau has to do things he doesn't want to do to get this Planeswalker off the battlefield. So as much fun as it may have been to deploy Love Struck Beast and Murderous Rider or think about Vivian, how about we play this Haymaker of a Mythic? Mm -hmm. And let's see you try to beat this. <laughs> he will have the attackers to put some pressure on the loyalty points on Liliana. He's got the Nissa who shakes the world coming up next. Oh, if there's a land. If there's a land. Yeah, there needs no to be a land. A land. So just the Deputy of Detention, that can steal Liliana. That's still pretty annoying. If you are Piotr Glagowski, he's just having all of his planeswalkers yoinked. He's not finding his removal. Does have the Arcbow Ranger that can deal with a Deputy of Detention if this second one does come down. Very, very tense times indeed as these players decide what it is they want to do. Voracious Hydra can kill something off the battlefield if it wants to. Well, yep, now, now the Paradise, now the, now, now the Paradise Druid is here. That's your second source of green mana. Yep. So that means Nissa, Rage's Hydra, the entire hand is unlocked now. Yep. But where do we go? I think it's just going to be a good old deputy of detention okay. there. Taking Liliana, stopping her underworld shenanigans. Seems good. Well, you can you can target Liliana straight up. Or you, I mean, you might as much interested in saying... Target a token, give some beatdowns. Yeah, I, I kind of yeah. like this too because that means Swing the deputy. That means the deputy is always going to do what it was meant to do. Yeah, precisely right. So swinging in here, how many points of damage is that? A Liliana down? Not yet. Yeah, that's gonna kill it. Is that killing it? Yeah, that that should finish it. Just nope, to one. Down to one. Okay, pardon me. So three. drawing a card though, that's pretty good. Okay, that's actually really good news for uh, for Canister that 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 Liliana is actually gonna stay alive. I thought yeah. that was gonna finish it off, but one point short. An extra zombie token, pretty good. Yep. I mean, the uh, Hydro Crisis will kill it unless Vivian comes into play and smacks it out the sky with a forest, perhaps. Because there's nothing else on the battlefield that he couldn't block to protect, or, you know, to prevent it from killing it. So very, very interesting turns here in this rather grindy matchup. Well, this is how I expected the first yeah. and second games to go. Yeah. Those, those games went much, much quicker. Yeah. This third one is starting to turn into a bit of a <laughs> marathon affair where it feels like Marcio is ahead. You could even say the first two games had a swift end. Wow. But um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't resist. I'm sorry. Uh, trust me, I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> so some quick maths here from Canister. What's he counting, I wonder? He is whipping out the Vivian Akbo Ranger. And I think we're going to see a nom nom here. Forrest is going to take down this Hydroid Crisis. Is it? He's deciding. Oh, the Paradise Druid instead. Yeah, I like that. Just in case there's anything that can target. Want to make sure we kill this? Yep. Bye-bye. Birdie down. So now he just has to deal with the ground threats. There is the other Nyssa who shakes the world, too, in fact. And the Voracious Hydra in the hand of Marshal Carvalho. So he's not out of it yet, not by a long shot, but... We do have a Liliana and a Vivian on the battlefield for Canisters. So, 
Planeswalker battle, he is certainly winning. He is currently winning the Planeswalker battle, yes. And again, I've been stressing just how important that is in this particular matchup of these green mid-range mirrors. Now, neither player has an Iss on the battlefield right now, but Marcio could deploy one this turn. Temple Garden being the draw for the turn is a little bit interesting because that starts to work itself into the voracious Hydra math and mm -hmm. how big you want to make this thing. Marcio's got some things to think about on this turn as well, too, because, again, we're playing a sub game now. Yeah. It's not about life totals at this stage, 15 to 14, a little bit in favor of Marcio. It, it's a Planeswalker sub game. Yeah, for sure. So we're going to fire off that land, comes in untapped, and is it going to be Nyssa or a Hungry Hungry Hydra? I want to see a Nyssa come down. I want to see this Hydra as big as it possibly can be. Let it be its own Hydra, but it looks like he's going to be the pick. Here it comes. What does it kill? The land? The token? Well, Draws looks. a card for uh, for Canister. Curious to see. Or does he just double the counters? Yeah, he's going to take go. care of the zombie. All right, zombie down. That is not Bob, so do not worry for Bob's mm -hmm. health, friends. Bob the zombie is okay. But drawing a noxious grasp off of that, that's pretty mm -hmm. damn good. Cedric, what's that going to kill? Uh, we're going to find out. Here come the creatures first to try to check these planeswalkers. Swinging in with the available team. Two lands and the two deputies. He can fire off that noxious grass to protect either or. So, ooh, this is actually kind of nice because he can kill... Noxious Grass can kill a deputy? Yep. Yeah? So we can get a Falmire Knight back, another blocker? That's pr I mean, it's, Kill the lands? It's, it's a pretty sick draw. Yeah, that's pretty nuts. It's a pretty, <laughs> it's a pretty oh, sick Oh, a little draw. Hydra, you have failed us. There we go. So, Noxious Grasp firing off. It was a pretty sick draw. That was actually a damn good draw. draw. Woo, Deputy of Detention down, Falmire Knights online. Forrest can take care of the other one that is going after Vivian, yep. but instead chooses to kill off Ugh. the island. Just one point of damage, going to get through and kill the Vivian Arcbow Ranger, but Liliana lives. What an absolute draw there for Canister. Woohoo! I bet he's happy about that. But the two lands that followed the raft, not so much. Well, the, the, so the lands aren't great. No. But having active Liliana is actively great. Oh, so yes. here comes Murderous Rider. Here comes Love Struck Beast. Oh. Make a zombie. Let's go up the ground again. Oh, goodness me. That was a massive swing there, actually, for Canister. Incredible. But a Wicked Wolf off the top. What is that going to take care of? Well, so what's interesting about... The, so we, we keep working ourselves in this really weird spot where Marcio's turn was... Presumably going to be a good one. It you take care of the zombie, you're going to take care of these planeswalkers, right? And maybe I lose a land in the exchange. He ended up losing two lands. Two lands yeah. So what that means now is he's got access to four mana, which means that Nyssa, not online. So the only thing he can play is actually what he just drew, which is Wicked Wolf. Now, there is a food token on the battlefield. Can play that, stack it, sacrifice it, the, the old uh, yeah. song and dance we've seen so many times already this <laughs> weekend, and kill something. But I'm getting a feeling that we might not be able to get Liliana off the battlefield again this turn. And this continues so, no. to be a problem. L look, I if I told you Liliana doesn't die, who do you think wins? Uh, Liliana. It's the person with Liliana. Liliana wins. No, no, no. Not even Glugowski, just Liliana. Sure, yeah, yeah. sure. She just wins. Ooh, Edgewell Innkeeper is nice, but no, uh, no adventure creatures to follow up, unfortunately. We do have the Temple of Malady. Send that land to the back. Enough. Absolutely. Enough land. Stop. Now Liliana just gumming up the board with her own zombies. Take that, Field of the Dead. And it is looking a little bit sketchy now for Marcio. He's got to find some stuff, and he oh, found the land. Step, there we go. Step one was a land for Nyssa. Good. Okay. Nyssa's down. Now what do we do? We can't attack very profitably, can we? No, I mean, Love Strike Beast is causing some real problems right now. Yep. So if you are, if you're, if you're Golovsky, you need to just draw something of substance mm -hmm. to keep up with your opponent. Yes. And now he held the Edgewell Innkeeper in the off chance that he actually drew some adventures, so on and so forth. Krull Harpooner is an interesting little find here, so I think he's going to assess the battlefield before deciding if he wants to keep that or not. <laughs> he's just counting to see how big a, uh, a Hydroid Crisis would be, mm -hmm. and decides this thing will just die to it, so goodbye. I don't know how many creatures he has in the, in the graveyard, but uh, Edgewell Innkeeper is still just hanging out until he finds something that gives him the benefit or the edge in playing it. Or is he just going to run it out now? Yeah, so I'm, it, it might be the time where he just says, I need to play this now. It's not really doing much of anything, and yeah. I'm surely he would love to draw a car off it, but just having it as a body to protect Liliana might be more than enough. Yeah. Because you just want that thing to keep living and keep generating tokens in the card advantage. Oh, yeah. And it's doing a great job of that right now. Oh, if this keeps going, we may see a Liliana ultimate. But Hydroid Crisis yoinked off the top there for Maestro Carvalho. Ooh -wee. 
He is going to draw some cards, gain some life, and have a pretty nasty threat in the air that can possibly deal with Liliana, and that is his main objective right now. Just keep this Planeswalker in check. Well, one could argue best draw for Marcio. Marcio's hand was fine. I mean, the backup copy of Nyssa mm -hmm. was not ideal. He had, some good he had some good cards that he could draw. He maybe drew his best card in his deck because this can, of course, snowball into oh, yeah. other good cards. This is a pretty big fishy that's uh, entering the battlefield now. An 8-8 eight, eight in the air. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Wow, that's a lot of land. Drawing a Veil of Summer. Yes, too shabby. so it's a lot of land, but that may have been an ideal draw set there in Veil of Summer. That card is so yeah. tricky. It's so problematic. Oh, naturally, perfect. Naturally murderous riders drawn. Perfect. It's like we have a script. We're watching yeah. a movie. It's totally fine. So each player is sacrificing two creatures. Canister wants some extra cards. Making some difficult decisions there for Marcio. What do you sacrifice? Paradise Druid, perhaps? Maybe the Voracious Hydra? What's doing the least for him at the moment? Oh, for Marcio, that is... Uh, the deputy attention can almost certainly go. Yep. And then, yeah, I think that I think that all makes sense. Now, Cancer gets to draw a couple of cards. Oh, back up. Yeah. Oh, goodness me. Okay. So that Veil of Summer that we thought was going to be like, yeah, this is totally fine. This, uh, this is safe. Nope, not anymore. It should end up being... Um, I mean, the Veil of Summer is still going to be okay. Yeah, it'll but, be okay. He'll, but yes, he'll draw I, agree, a card. I agree with you. That's very rare, by the way. What's that? That you agree with me. Oh, stop. <laughs> So Murderous Rider firing off the swift end. Nissa, who shakes the world, is trembling in her boots. Veil of Summer Aww. in response. <laughs> and Canister just goes. Canister was not happy with that. We got a little reaction. He was no, not happy no, with that. No but emo, what? but we got a reaction. You know what? He's OK. Oh. Oh. Okay. Well, I mean, look, when you're ah, hoping, you're hoping he would have just loved to go kill your Nissa, kill your Hydroid Crisis. Uh, this yeah, game's yeah, super yeah, easy sure. right now. It, it, it's gotten more difficult. So he has to respond to the Veil of Summer with yeah. The Swift End on the Hydro Crisis, take care of the big 8-8. Eight, eight. That means nice. Nissa's going to still hang around. Oh, and yeah. We're going, I mean, he still has he still has a card drawing engine with Edgewell Innkeeper. Ooh. He drew a copy of Legion's End. Okay. This now, is... remember, not going to do anything right now because of the Veil. Yeah, no, can't do anything now, so just hang on. But this Legion's End has got a pretty good target there for the Breeding Pool, because I believe it'll hit the Breeding Pool creature and get rid of the one in hand. So, you know, not the ideal thing to smack, but... It's an option. Gilded Goose is going to be the play, making another food token to make this wolf extra big so he can get through the Lovestruck Beast if he so chooses. Liliana down to one. I bet you Marsha just wants to kill this Planeswalker more than anything. Still has the spare Nyssa in hand that Carvalho doesn't know about. Sorry, that uh, Glagoski doesn't know about. Mm -hmm. So even if he had killed off Nyssa there, there's still another one to deal with. And she's brought Landy friends. Ooh, this is getting tense. This is a real game here. This is, I mean, this is this is very much a back and forth game. You saw some emotion there from yeah. from from Canister, who is of course willing to show it. Yeah, no, I like it. Like show emotion, but keep it cool. You got a game to win here. There's a lot on the line. Hundred thousand dollars for the winner of this tournament. Marcio now just deciding how he wants to attack this. Does he want to go after Liliana? It's only at one. Just at one. You know, it, I mean, not it, threatening. It feels like it's killable, but yeah, at the yeah. same time, you don't want to exhaust all your resources, get that killed, and then maybe potentially lose your battlefield, yeah. and then your Nyssa, and then you're playing catch up again. Canister still has the one copy of uh, Fine Finality in his main deck, right? Yep. Yeah. He, okay. he, he almost he took it out briefly. Oh, yeah, and then brought it back. Board, and then he brought it back in. All right. Because oh. if the game goes like this. I would love to see some great. explosions on this battlefield. Yeah. I want it. Come on. Come on, library, behave. So we take a look, you know, the Wicked Wolf that Marcio has, two food tokens on the yeah. battlefield, so it's going to be really tough to take care of. you got these 3-3 three, three <laughs> lands from Nyssa, three of those. They look like they're thinking about coming in now. The Voracious Hydra is not particularly large, just a 2-3, and then Gilded Goose is just going to crank out more food tokens, so that one's not particularly relevant. So we're working with four creatures, maybe a fifth there in Voracious Hydra that is relevant in this instance. If he sings with the team, he kills it, right? Yeah. I mean, pretty close to it. Yeah, I mean, it, sh it, yeah, it, it should be clear for takeoff here. Yeah. So Canister just assigning blocks, deciding what he wants to kill. Looks like getting rid of some lands is going to be a priority for him. This Wicked Wolf can become indestructible, so no real point in blocking him unless you really can protect your Liliana. But uh, too many dudes and not enough blockers, unfortunately, for Canister. So Liliana will bite the dirt here. 
I mean, Liliana did a great yeah. job this game. That was fantastic. That's a so lot. So many cards, so many bodies. That's a lot to get out of your Planeswalker. Oh, yeah. She did good. She can go and take a breather. Maybe come back later. Who knows? So we're just assigning the blockers here. Finding the best possible outcome for this attack phase. And uh, Wicked Wolf will get the job done along with the Hallowed Fountain. So Liliana is no longer a factor, but we will get a card drawn off of her trigger. Good Lillian, draw. ooh, Vivian Arcbow Ranger. Good draw. That's nice. So many lands, though. Wow. All of the Overgrown Tombs coming out to play. Does have the Legion's End he can fire off on perhaps a Gilded Goose, just to prevent her from making more food. Can't target the Wicked Wolf. Need to find something else to deal with that. I think he wants to keep the Edgewell Innkeeper alive if he wants to attack here, possibly with a pumped-up Lovestruck Beast, maybe. Yeah, I mean, you, you definitely want to keep the Innkeeper alive for as long as you can because oh, that's yeah. your card-drawing engine now. Mm -hmm. Your Liliana was your card-drawing engine before, or at least your card advantage engine, and that's yeah. long gone. So now we're going to go towards Legion Den to take care of the Hollow Fountain, Lo looking to potentially clear a path to take care of Nyssa. Again, notable mm -hmm. that lands are being killed yep. also. With Legion's End resolving, now Kanisha knows exactly what Marcio is working with, which is another copy of Nyssa, mm -hmm. Island Forest. This is one turn away from Ultimate. It's minus nine or minus eight? I believe it is minus eight. Okay, so he's going to want to get some damage on that. Because indestructible lands don't sound like a fun time, just saying. Here we go, Vivian Arcbow Ranger is now going to give two 1-1 one, one tokens, 1-1 one, one counters, I should say, two. Who is it going to be? Is it going to be the little zombie that gets an upgrade, or is it going to be the love-struck beast? Now, don't forget, too, with this Vivian activation, it grants trample. Yeah, so that gets over any blockers that Marcio may have up, which currently is just the Gilded Goose. I bet he's a little bit scared there, shaking in his boots. <laughs> if gooses wear boots, I don't think so. Distributing the counters to the Love Struck Beast and to the Zombie. So we got a 3 3 and a 6 6 that are ready to rock and roll. And they are going straight yeah. for Nissa, who shakes the world. We do not want an activation. If we are Glagowski, that would hurt. So this is an attack here for. The easy way to look at this is this is an attack here for 9. Mm -hmm. And there's two toughness. So it would be an attack here. If there's a block, 7 damage is going to get through. Now, he is deciding how he wants to attack because he has to worry about a counterattack. Mm hmm from Marcio. Looks like he wants to keep back the zombie just to do some blocking against Wicked Wolf, perhaps. No attacks. We just want to keep her from ultimating, maybe? Well, you definitely want to keep, her, you definitely want to keep Nissa from ultimating. Yeah. You want to kind of keep it in check because you're not really that scared of the three threes that it generates and you know your opponent's hand, yeah. which is lands, whatever, backup Nissa, whatever. Yeah. So it, it's worth it to pay attention to it a little bit and say you can't ultimate. But it's also worth it to say, I need to keep my Vivian alive because that's the best thing going on right now. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Wicked Wolf, an interesting draw. Okay, it's something. It's not land, though. So that's good for uh, Marshall Cavallio. Piotr Glugowski hanging out with several creatures on the battlefield. Looking pretty good. But the Wicked Wolf has been known to run away with the games. And now there is Wicked Wolf number two to deal with as well. So that's the only card that canister does not know about. Mm. Again, you see the eyeballs on the cards that are in Marcio's hand. Know about Nissa, know about Island, know about Forest. More, I mean, naturally, not scared of those lands nope. and not scared of a backup Nissa. So there are some scary draw steps. This Wicked Wolf may have been one of them. Now, do we get rid of this Edgewell Innkeeper because that's allowing the Lovestruck Beast to attack? It's drawing cards. Seems like the best option. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a little bit scary. It, it's not really drawing a lot of cards right now. Mm -hmm. So it's not the scariest thing in the world. The Goose is going to very quickly make a food... But the Wicked Wolf will go after, I think he's going after the Edgewell Innkeeper or Lovestruck Beast. Well, it can just go after yeah. Lovestruck Beast and Lovestruck just Beast eat three and pieces just eat of all food. Them. Oh, you are a hungry little guzzler, aren't you? There we go. <laughs> Wicked Wolf is going to become rather large, indestructible, and kill off this Lovestruck Beast that is causing a few gray hairs here for Marshall Carvalho. I like that. That's a pretty good uh, turn. He's, I bet you he's just hoping, please, no murderous rider right now. <laughs> <laughs> Not that it would do anything. Because, you know, indestructible and whatnot. So there we go. A 6-6 six, six indestructible wicked wolf takes care of that love-struck beast. 
And Nissa is free and clear to create some more 3-3s three yeah. and swing in at that, Vivian. That was arguably the best draw in his deck. Yeah. I mean, Deputy Attention would have probably been fine too, but, you know, Wicked Wolf coming down, Goose being able to activate, take care of that Love Struck Beast that was doing a nice shot of brick walling basically everything. Now Vivian is down. Now there are only lands in hand. Temple of Malady is going to have to find oh something goodness. great. It did not. Found so, itself. So now it's a mystery draw step. You see these creatures are just completely outclassed. A 3-3 three, three and a 2-1. Yeah. A 3-3, three, 2-1, three, and a 1-1 one, one against... You know, an army. It's just an army of making three threes <laughs> at, at worst. I know there's a little baby oh, voracious okay. hydra out there. So maybe, maybe the best draw there for Marcio. One heck of a top deck there for oh, yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. Just getting rid of that big beast. Fantastic job there. Nessu shakes the world. Still hanging out. Animating lands. Swinging in as much as they like. We have the goose online, too, to make some food for the wolves. So if they are being threatened with death, they can just, uh, you know... Munched a little something and become indestructible. I wish that happened every time I sacrificed food tokens. <laughs> In real life, that'd be nice. Now life total is starting to become a concern right now for oh, Milosky yeah. as well, because 15 felt like a lot. And you got to remember, we were playing just sub games, right? We were playing, I got to kill your Liliana, I got to kill your Vivian, I got to kill your Nyssa. It was all sub game territory. Well, now these wolves are large. Now these creatures are saying, well, there's no more sub game to play. Mm -hmm. the, I have to play the real game, which is kill you. And green creatures generally do that pretty quickly. So oh, some yeah. exchanges will Oof. take place, but it's not good news here for Canister. No, it is not. You see that advantage bar on the screen now. Marcia Cavallio is well ahead. And all he basically needs to do is swing and say go and hope Canister doesn't draw anything useful here. Going to fire off the Falmire Knight's Profane inside, draw a card, and he finds fine finality. Does that keep him alive? Yeah, that's the, the unfortunate oh, no, thing is, 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 is it's not going to do it for a multiple, multitude of reasons. One is Wicked Wolf is a 6-6. Six, six, two, there's still just Anissa on the battlefield Darn. and Anissa in hand. So I was thinking if that would be a draw step, that would actually come back and save him. I think he's going to take a look at the graveyard and see if there's anything to get back with the find yeah. half of the card now. Unfortunately, the uh, Murderous Rider doesn't go into the graveyard, so can't find that back. Falmire Knight does get the trigger off on Edgewell Innkeeper, but just drawing another land, he seems to be really unlucky here with the land draws. Yeah, I mean, some, some untimely little bit of flooding here. Uh, you know, not, not the end of the world. It, it did allow him to actually play multiple spells per game. Yeah. So uh, multiple spells over the course of many, many turns to actually keep him in this game, in which there were multiple stages where he was behind, so... A land certainly not exactly what he was looking for there. We're going to see a fabled, cra fabled passage get cracked. Get a swamp, a swamp. But, I mean, Canister hasn't conceded this game, so he must feel like he can do something. Yeah, go find the creatures back. Oh, there is a murder strider in there. Huh. Oh, yeah, the one that fizzled. Yep. On well, a fizzled veil of summer. So that's hanging out. He could uh, go get that, but it would kill him, obviously. So we don't want to do that. Cost of paying Swift End is dealing two damage to yourself. But no, he might, I mean, yeah, there's a chance he might just deploy Murderous Rider. Yeah, just for the sure. lifelink side of things, just to pad his life total a little bit. We've got the Death Toucher to deal with a big creature, but, you know, we have two indestructible wolves on the other side of the battlefield, so it's looking a little tricky here for Canister. Finding a Nissa who shakes the world with the Edgewall Innkeeper's trigger. Does this keep him alive? Hey, I is, still don't think so. He is trying. He's because trying. He is eking out as much as he can from this. Casting Murderous Rider also allows him to draw a card with the Edgewell Innkeeper. Mm -hmm. The problem, of course, is these creatures are all pretty small, but the Foulmire Knights do have Death Touch, so it doesn't matter that they're only 1-1s. One so let's try again. All right. Another Paradise, Paradise, Paradise Blocker. Okay. All right. He's not out of this yet, folks. Keep your eyes glued to the screen. Let's see what Marcio can come up with here. What does he draw? Deputy of Detention? That's... Oh, Falmire Knights. You know, easy-peasy, mac and cheesy. I think that's a good draw. That's, yeah, not too shabby. I think. Well, <laughs> Deputy of Detention can take care of the Falmire Knights. Nissa can make a creature to attack, so we're going to be down to four blockers. If you're, if you're Canister, two Paradise Druids, a Murderous Rider, and Edgewell Innkeeper. If you're Canister, you can put yourself at a theoretical four because of the two lifelink from Murderous Rider, so let's call them at four instead of two. And then there would be one, two, three, four, it looks like five attackers. So because if you animate one. a land, so not, I, I think what, what I'm perceiving here is those Fulminarts are going to bite the dust is yeah. a canister is already, he, he's, he's doing the math along with yeah, me yeah, yeah. <laughs> right now to see if he's Quick actually going to get another turn or not. Oh, man. Tense times. A very timiest top deck there of the Deputy of Detention getting rid of those Falmire Knights, swinging in with a team. Can Canister survive this? I think he's at one. Well, the, th the other thing, too, here, so 2-3 in front of 2-3, chump, chump, um, Edgewell Innkeeper, chump, go to one, but more importantly, your battlefield stinks. Yeah, you're, everything's dead. Yeah. <laughs> 
So while Marcio does not kill Canister this turn, he is it's pretty much he is effectively dead. Yeah. Because he is so far behind. These wicked wolves, the deputies, you know, a lot of these cards that Marcio specifically put into his deck to play have been very, very effective. Edgeball Innkeeper is a little late. Yeah, a little to late this to party. the party. And that's gonna do it. Marcio Carvalho picks up the W against Piotr Gogowski. What an absolute Awesome series of games there. That was great. Well, the, the first and second game, they were actually pretty quick, a lot yeah. quicker than I expected. I expected the three game set to be more like that. There was a lot of back and forth there, but ultimately, Mr. Second Place is your winner on his way to maybe not second place, but first yeah. here at Mythic Championship 5. That was an excellent tussle between the two. The mid range matches, like you said, they're so interactive. They just want to try and eke out as much as they can out of the decks, out of each other. And I love that. That was fantastic. I mean, if you like Planeswalkers and you like back and forth and a lot of inter <laughs> interesting decisions, you got them in that match. That's what a green mirror, mid-range mirror is going to look like when food is involved and adventures are involved.